Hey everyone, Gil Gross here, post-match Taylor Fritz versus Andre Rublev, Indian Wells 2022 semi-final. If you're not here for spoilers, click off the video in 3, 2, 1. It will be Taylor Fritz playing his first Masters 1000 final in his home state of California at Indian Wells after beating Andre Rublev in straight sets 7-5, 6-4. Going into this match, I was thinking about what might happen, and I struggled to think of areas where Rublev had a clear advantage over Taylor Fritz. That is not to say that Fritz is way better, or that Fritz would win the vast majority of the times they played. That might not necessarily be true, and I'm not arguing that. All I'm saying is, coming into this match, Taylor Fritz ranked 20th in the world. Andre Rublev ranked 7th in the world. Gap's not that large. Did not believe it going into the match and obviously was not proven wrong here. I think that they are players who bring similar things to the table. Great offensive games, brilliant ball striking, big first serves, but there were a couple things for Fritz that I think there is a clear edge. Backhand to backhand, you like Taylor. And then on this second serve dynamic, which ended up being the most important thing that swung the match. Let's talk about these second serves. Indian Wells, gritty hard courts. If you have a good kick serve, that can be a, a big key because the ball bounces very high. If you don't, you don't. And Rublev still does not hit a heavy ball on the second serve. It is a little slow, and the top spin on it certainly doesn't make up for the, the lack of pace. And someone like Fritz with a great backhand, and that is assuming that Rublev gets the second serve to the backhand because sometimes he leaves it too central and doesn't even accomplish that. But even if he gets it to the backhand, Fritz has a, a good enough backhand and a good enough attacking backhand and he's great on the rise on that side he can attack that return rublev's second serve is vulnerable in this spot uh against taylor fritz if if rublev was playing a player with a much weaker backhand he might be able to get away with the second serve that he has but but not against fritz i believe that backhand is a little too good so rublev ends up winning uh 49 of second serve points which is not, uh, it's not an atrocious number, I will admit, but certainly not a positive number. And what stuck out to me is that there were a lot of examples where Rublev wasn't just, this wasn't a case of Rublev just losing rallies. He was actually losing the point off of the Taylor Fritz return. In the match, Fritz either forced an error or hit a winner on 10 returns, not to mention a couple of Rublev double faults that were clearly initiated by the pressure that Taylor Fritz was applying with his return. So I thought second serve was an issue here, and now you, you flip it around. You might ask me, well, how many return winners slash forced errors did Rublev hit? Two. And believe it or not, the two games, the, the game that Rublev broke in the first set, he hit two great backhand down the line returns. And then the game that he almost broke in the second set, where he had break points at four all, Rublev hit a couple of really great aggressive returns, like the one at, at Deuce um, to set up break point, um, the, the second break point. And actually the, the point before he had a good return. So... When Rublev was having success, that was the difference. But Taylor Fritz's kick serve to Rublev's backhand, you don't feel like that is a recipe for uh, that is much of a, is as much of a mismatch for Fritz. You feel like Fritz hits a solid kick serve around 100 miles per hour. I think it's pretty good. Sometimes his ball toss is bad and he can double fault. But as long as the toss is good, Fritz has a good kicker. It's hard. It's heavy. And Rublev's backhand, not quite as comfortable attacking. Pretty good, but not quite at Fritz's level. And Fritz can get to neutral 
far more often, maybe even sometimes able to attack on the first ball behind his second serve. So that was a big difference. Uh, credit to Fritz's first serve returning as well, because um, on Rublev's 11-match win streak, which came to an end here, um, he was he won over 70% of first serve points won in every single match on that streak. And he was only at 65% first serve points won in this match, which is probably the thing that impressed me and surprised me most about Taylor Fritz's game was uh, his first serve returning. Uh, it was it was very good in this match. Um, then we go to the backhand to backhand, where I thought coming in that that's kind of what Fritz would need and would want in the rallies. And you look at the ground stroke stats, and indeed there was an advantage there for Fritz as Rublev finished with four Ground stroke finishes on the backhand to six unforced errors. So a negative value proposition there. Rublev with 11 finishes on the backhand, three unforced errors. Clearly a weapon on that side. Is Rublev's forehand a little bit better than Fritz's forehand? Yes, I think so. But I think the difference is a little bit more marginal than the backhand to backhand edge that I think Fritz has. And it's mostly about how solid Fritz is on the cross-court backhand. He can hit that ball very precise with a lot of pace, and he can do so without missing and change his direction very well um, in addition to that, where I think Rublev, just less steady, more volatile, miss, dumps those backhands in the net and loses control of them on a far more regular basis uh, compared to Taylor Fritz. And that's why I think backhand to backhand, a clear advantage for Fritz that he should have in this matchup on a pretty consistent basis. However, this match was extremely tight. And that has to be said. It could come down to a couple of points that really swung this thing. And for Rublev... He played a bad game at 5-6. Fritz also served for the first set and failed to close it out. I think that Taylor, one of the biggest issues in his game is his bad habit of decelerating under pressure. When he gets tight, he can decelerate and lose his aggression. It cost him against Tsitsipas at the Australian Open this year. And we saw a little bit of that in this match. But in the first set, Fritz built that initial lead and had the scoreboard pressure. And I think... That was actually essential in this first set. You look at, you know, Rublev serving at 5-6 where every break point was going to be a set point. It, it just felt like neither player was handling the pressure very well. Rublev a little bit, and this has been a common theme in some of these big matches, a little bit too tense. He, he just, I think, still needs to figure out a way to relax more. Um, he's always going to be an intense guy and an intense player, but there's too much tension in his game, and he's making too many mistakes under pressure. The game at 5-6, just too many unforced errors, double faults in there, uh, not enough first serves at that 5-6 game, and he gets broken to lose the first set. And then in the second set, Fritz got tight at 4-all. He was up 40-15 in the game, and... On, um, I think the point that you want to circle here is on break point. Fritz again decelerates, hits a tight approach. He's uh, it wasn't a good approach shot, and Rublev missed the backhand pass down the line, didn't even make Fritz volley. That's the point you circle, that's the cardinal sin. Sometimes a match like this comes down to one point like that, and Fritz was tight, and Rublev had it lined up. It's a pass he had to either hit for a winner or at least make Fritz volley, and he missed it just wide. Uh, and then Fritz was very good at deuce, uh, to his credit, with a forehand inside and winner and an ace to hold in that game. And then Fritz broke for the match on the very next game. Absolutely bizarre finish. Unbelievable. I mean, Rublev hit a ridiculous backhand volley at 1530 that I think was mostly luck, but I'll give him credit. I mean, amazing insanity kind of shot uh, where Fritz had a sitter forehand and didn't finish and Rublev just reflexed it for a winner. And then at 30 all, Rublev missed a forehand that I could have put away. You know, I mean, it was a, it was right on top of the net. It was a totally shocking miss. And then what happens on match point 30, 40 aggressive backhand down the line return off of a second serve forces the error. Again, 
Rublev kick serve to Fritz backhand, times it down the line, and there's the match. So um, really great win for Fritz, huge win for him. This is his best tournament. Uh, for Rublev, it was a great run, and I don't think that this was a, an awful performance from him. I just think that Fritz is well on his way to being a top 10 player, and the gap between Fritz and Rublev is very small at this point because of the jump that Fritz has made since last fall. You want to look at career accomplishments? Not even close. Rublev has been way better than Taylor Fritz for a long time now, for the vast majority of the last three, four years. But just in the last four or five months, I would say, Fritz has made a leap. And now Fritz is pretty close to Rublev's level. He got the best of him in this one. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.